Hey, it's Tom from Pack Hacker, and in this video, we're taking a detailed look at the Grip6 wallet that I've been testing over the course of the last month. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up so we can keep helping you find the right gear. Let's get into it. Okay, so the primary materials we have going on here are aluminum and leather. This is the gunmetal finish up here at the top, so it's kind of gray. And then we have the black leather as well. You can see that some of the uh, leather has a little bit of uh, fraying going on at the edges here where it's cut. So just note that, and it is a textured leather. Um, up to you whether or not that's your look and style or not. And these are also manufactured in the USA, which is pretty awesome. Now, I also just have some other wallets that I wanna bring out first just to compare the size to. So this is the Travax Contour. If you're looking for a metal wallet like this, I'm sure that you've looked at it. You can see the different sizes. Contour is quite a bit smaller. Now the Grip6 is quite large itself. And then we have the Ridge Wallet, which I can bring over as well, and that's also quite a bit smaller. So this is a little bit big for my preference. One of my favorite wallets is the Nomadic wallet. It is just like an elastic band. It's very minimal and very small. And then I've got the Dango Dapper wallet. Compare the sizes there. The Dapper is quite a little bit larger uh, than the Travax. Let me just put them all out so you can see. And then we have the Ridge there. And then like the Bellroy card case as well, which you can kind of see the difference in size there. It's actually pretty close to the Bellroy card case. So there's just a quick size comparison for you so you can take a look. Now let's get into the individual aspects of this wallet a little bit more. So we have the Grip6 American Made debossed on the front of the wallet here. Nothing on the back, just a nice clean finish. This loop, I'm kind of hit or miss on. I personally like to use it as kind of like a little fidget spinner, just spinning it around. Um, probably not the best idea to be spinning around your cards and your cash, but just to give you an idea of how well everything stays inside, spinning it pretty quick there. So there you have that. Now, this mechanism on the side is what helps get the cards out. So when you press that down, the cards will pop out of the top. And there is a little bit of finesse that needs to happen here, and there's really no rhyme or reason to how these cards come out. So if I just give it like some presses, you can see that some cards come up faster than others. So there that second card came up. There they all came out. <laughs> and that's the thing too, when you're pushing this up, you kind of want to have it up towards you. And you, that, there is like a sweet spot in the pressure, right? So you can I mean, push it too hard and a card can come out. But for me, I also kind of just like, this is sort of like addicting to do. It's like a little bit of a fidget spinner type of deal. And I do like that. It was, it was nice to do this. And uh, it's, you know, not too bad in terms of sorting through the cards, you kind of give it a press and then you can sort through and grab what you want. Um, but yeah, if you press it too hard, you might run into things falling out. So there is a bit of a sweet spot there in getting used to it as well. Now the other thing that I like, and let me just show you how many cards I have in here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I could get eight into this compartment. Um, I just was testing the wallet with six. Obviously these aren't my credit cards just so we don't have them on video here. Um, but, you know, I could probably get away with uh, eight on the inside there, and I'm just trying to get them all in. You can see that it is a little bit of a tight fit when you put them all together like that. But yeah, just even now, I'm just like doing this for fun. So I, I do like that aspect. A little bit larger to probably fit some of that those mechanicals in there, but if you like that as a feature, that's good. I've just got two dollars in here. Two dollar, uh, two USD, I'm oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. Five USD in here, folded up into quarters. So there's a good amount of space that you have inside of these pockets out here in the front. Um, however, you can kind of see that through usage and testing, it's starting to stretch out a little bit and wear out. And that's the problem that I have with a lot of leather wallets is they'll kind of just stretch out and you're like, okay, well, if I want to put one bill in here after having, you know, 10 in there, it's kind of a little bit more empty. And then I like they have that same feature on the back. This is fraying like crazy, which I don't love, but I just have like a Metro card in there. That's not, it didn't really work quite as well inside of this main one. Uh, it doesn't really 
like it doesn't really pop up. Uh, so like if you have like an inflexible card or a flexible card that's a little bit lighter, that can totally go inside of this area as well. So there you have it, the Grip6 wallet with the leather and the loop. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We will see you in the next video.